What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information, even though, you know, there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history. But hey, we can teach ourselves. And one of the tools we can use is my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Remember, visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy. And I appreciate your support. Queen Ndate Yala Mboj. In 1810, the Kingdom of Wallo was a vast and robust West African kingdom that existed near the lower Senegal River area in present-day Senegal and Martania. The Wallo Kingdom was one of four Wolof kingdoms. Kayor, Baol, and Jolof were the other three kingdoms. Brock, Amar, Fatim, Barroso, and Boz was the powerful king who ruled Wallo. His queen was Lingier Awo, Fatim, Yamar, Kuri, Yaye, and Boz. In the Wallo Kingdom, Brock was the title that meant king. Lingier meant queen, and Lingier Ewo meant the queen who was the king's first wife. Ndate Yala was the youngest daughter of Brock Amar and Lingier Ewo Fatim Yamar. They also produced an eldest daughter who would become Lingier of Wallo. As young girls, Ndate Yala and her sister learned how to rule a kingdom and were trained to fight with the Wallo army. When the men were away, the women were formidable opponents to any challenges. Like a number of other African nations, the Walo women warriors were a part of their army. The women were seen as skilled and fierce. On one occasion in 1820, Barak Amar Fatim was away from his kingdom. A group of Moors attempted to invade Walo. They were met and defeated by the women warriors of Walo, led by Lingier Ewo Fatim Yamar. Unfortunately, Barak Amar Fatim Barroso and Boj died in 1926. Shortly after defeating the Moors, these women warriors of Wallo were forced to fight the invading Moors again who returned with more soldiers. The number of soldiers the women were facing was too great and they were defeated. Before the defeat, Lingier Awo Fatim Yamar was able to escape with her two daughters. The death of Barak Amar Fatim was significant for the Wallo kingdom because he was known for resisting the Islamic faith and culture. He was labeled as anti-Islamic for his rejection of Islam. Ndate Yala married Brock Yerim at the age of 16. Brock Yerim was her cousin, but the marriage occurred to maintain their family's dynasty. She later married the warrior and prince of Kayor, Moroso Tase Diop. Ndate Yala would also appoint Moroso Tase as the leader of her army because of his immense skill as a warrior. Around the year 1846, Ndate Yala's eldest sister was Lingier Wallo until her death. Ndate Yala was officially crowned Lingier in 1846 and it did not take long for her to show her skill as a warrior and intellect as a ruler. As Lingier, Ndate Yala enlarged the women warriors of Wallo. She would need the might because the French and the Moors would become her enemies. Lingier and Ndate Yala had a disagreement with the French who occupied a French colony called St. Louis over the taxing of the Soninke people as they passed through the Wallo lands. The French accused Ndate Yala of stealing a number of oxen as they taxed the Soninke. The French sent a letter to Ndate Yala stating that if she doesn't return the stolen oxen, she would be treated as an enemy. Ndate Yala did not appreciate being accused of stealing oxen, and she surely didn't take kindly to the threat of being an enemy. Ndate Yala reigned from 1846 to 1855, and from 1847, she was constantly at war against the French and the Moors of Trezor. Lingier Ndate Yala and Moroso Tasse led the Kingdom of Wallo against the French in battle in 1855. The French were determined to destroy the six main kingdoms of the Senegambia area, which included the four kingdoms of Wallo. Wallo was the first of the six Senegambian kingdoms to be attacked by the French. One, because of its close proximity to St. Louis, and two, because it was led by a woman. The French saw Wallo as weak because Ndate ruled the kingdom. The warriors of Wallo were fierce and brave. They were outmanned and outgunned by the French, but they were still able to fight off the French for several months. Eventually, the French overwhelmed the Wallo warriors, men and women, fighting for their freedom. The kingdom was falling, but Moroso Tasse and his soldiers were still fighting the French. 
And Date Yala was able to escape with a few of her family members. Upon her escape, she stated the following words to her soldiers. Today, we are invaded by the conquerors. Our army is completely routed. The Taito of Walo, valiant warriors though they are, have almost all fallen to the bullet of the enemy. The invader is stronger than we are, I know, but should we abandon Walo to the hands of the foreigners? The kingdom of Walo had fallen, and Date Yala and Moroso Tase were forced to relocate to the city of Kayor, where they received protection from family members. The French threatened to invade the family if they did not surrender in Date Yala and her husband. The family refused the French and chose to protect their queen. And Date Yala died in 1860. She is remembered as one of the most powerful and legendary queens in the history of Walo or the Senegambian region. She is highly revered and loved by her people, so much that a statue of her was erected in the city of Tagana, Senegal. To Lingier and Date Yala and Bo, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit my website at www.ontheshoulders1.com. There, you can support my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 1, North America. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G. And you can also support me by hitting the super like button under this video. Please catch the next video coming up, and I love you all.